Hello, friends. We have an exciting new season of our podcast, Sleep Tight Science, and we would love for you to check it out. Sleep Tight Science is a bedtime show that answers the questions you have about science. Questions like how your eyes work, how coniferous plants survive, and what nutrients they need. We also share some amazing facts, like did you know that the average person farts 5 to 25 times every single day? P.U. You can follow Sleep Tight Science wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to submit your questions. Thank you. Hello, I'm Cheryl, and this is Sleep Tight Relax, a calming bedtime podcast for the young and young at heart. It's time to get cozy in bed and listen to tonight's story. Our sleep story tonight is the first part of the tale of Daddy Long Legs. Rusty Wren is all worked up about the strange footprints he has found near Farmer Green's house. When he takes everyone over to see them, they are gone. Mr. Chippy says he'll keep an eye out for who made them, and the next day, they see it is a spider that they name Daddy Longlegs. The people near Farmer Green's start asking Daddy Longlegs questions, but he seems to not be able to hear them sometimes. Is he hard of hearing? No matter how your day was, Let's forget about it for now and focus on slowing down and feeling relaxed. Close your eyes and feel warm and secure. Next, I would like you to take a slow, deep breath in through your nose, as big a breath as you can and as slow as you can. Then slowly let the air out through your mouth. Taking deep belly breaths helps us relax at any time of the day, but it's a great habit to have before sleep. Try it again. Take a deep breath in. and let the air slowly flow out. Take a deep breath in, and now out. Breathe in deeply, filling your body with air and relaxation. Breathe out slowly, expelling any tension. Try to keep breathing slowly and deeply as we continue with the first part of the tale of Daddy Longlegs. There was great excitement in the neighborhood of Farmer Green's house. Rusty Wren had found some strange tracks and nobody knew whose they were. Now, when they were puzzled like that, the field and forest folk usually went straight to Mr. Crow for advice. But this time, it happened that the old gentleman had gone on an excursion to the further side of Blue Mountain, where Brownie Beaver lived. And there seemed to be no one else at hand who was likely to be able to explain the mystery. Being quite old, Mr. Crow was very wise, and people often sought his opinion, though later they fell into the habit of consulting Daddy Longlegs upon matters they did not understand. 
but this was before Daddy Longlegs was known in Pleasant Valley. Upon hearing Rusty Wren's news, a good many of his neighbors hurried to the place where Rusty had noticed the strange tracks. They were there in the dust of the road, Rusty Wren explained to his friends. I could see them plainly, I assure you. And there's no doubt that a large company crossed the road right here. Why can't we see the tracks now, several people wanted to know. A horse and wagon passed this way and ruined the footprints, Rusty said. They couldn't have been very big, somebody remarked. Well, no, Rusty Wren admitted. I wouldn't call them big, but they certainly weren't as small as the footprints of an ant. When they heard that, some of Rusty's friends looked relieved. We don't need to worry anyhow, a number of them said to one another. But there was one that was disappointed. That was Reddy Woodpecker. Why, the strangers, whoever they are, are too small to matter to me, he cried. And here I've wasted all this time for nothing at all. He looked angrily at Rusty Wren, and Rusty felt very uneasy. Luckily, Reddy went away grumbling, but Rusty Wren couldn't help feel a bit worried. Never mind what that one says, little Mr. Chippy advised Rusty Wren after the quarrelsome Reddy Woodpecker had gone away. I'm glad you told me about those strange tracks. I live nearby, in the wild grapevine on the stone wall, and I will watch for more tracks, and those that make them too. Let me know when you learn something new, said Rusty Wren. And Mr. Chippy said that nothing would please him more than to do just that. Well, the very next day, Mr. Chippy's son, Chippy Jr., knocked at Rusty Wren's door, which was right beneath Farmer Green's chamber window, and told Rusty that he was wanted by the roadside at once. So Rusty flew straight to the stone wall, where he found little Mr. Chippy all aflutter. Mr. Chippy dropped quickly into the road, pointing to some tiny marks in the dust. Are those like the tracks you saw? he asked. Yes, the very same, cried Rusty Wren. And now you see for yourself that there must have been a crowd. To his surprise, Mr. Chippy shook his head. There was only one person, he said. One person with eight legs. Why do you think that? Rusty Wren asked him doubtfully. I don't think it. I know it, Mr. Chippy replied. I've seen the person six times today with my own eyes. What does he look like? Rusty Wren inquired. Like nobody else I ever saw, Mr. Chippy explained. His legs are long and thin, and his body is very small. And though his mouth makes me think of a pair of pincers, he seems quite friendly and harmless. What's his name? asked Rusty Wren. I don't know, said Mr. Chippy, but there's only one name that fits him. I've already called him by it, and he seemed to like it too. What's that? Rusty asked. Daddy Longlegs, said little Mr. Chippy. All the neighbors began to call him Daddy Longlegs, and anyone might naturally think that he had lived in Pleasant Valley a great many years. But it was not so. Late in the summer, Daddy Longlegs had appeared from nobody knew where. Although people often inquired where his old home was, he always pretended that he didn't hear them and began to talk about the weather. And as for Daddy Longlegs' new home in Pleasant Valley, nobody knew much about that either. 
no matter how curious anyone might be, it did them no good at all to ask Daddy Longlegs where he lived. When prying people put that question to him, Daddy Longlegs always waved his eight legs in every direction and answered, Over there! Of course, such a reply told nothing to anyone, and it led to a good many disputes among Daddy Longlegs' neighbors. No two could ever agree as to which of Daddy's legs really pointed toward the place where he lived. Anyhow, the wily gentleman was frequently seen scrambling about the stone wall by the roadside near Farmer Green's house. And little Mr. Chippy, who made his home in the wild grapevine that grew on the wall, always claimed that Daddy Longlegs was a neighbor of his. He's a good neighbor, too, Mr. Chippy told his friends. He's very quiet, and he never quarrels. And he's always pleasant and ready for a chat. It's too bad that he can't hear very well. I've asked him at least a dozen times how old he is, but he never seems to hear me. Old Mr. Crow, who liked nothing better than prying into people's affairs, slowly shook his head at that. And coughing slightly, he remarked in a hoarse voice that there must be reasons why Daddy Longlegs wouldn't tell where he came from, or where he was living, or how old he was. But Mr. Crow wouldn't say what he thought might be the reasons. Although he was a wise bird, there were some things he didn't know. Now, in a way, Mr. Crow was right. Daddy Longlegs had the best of reasons for keeping some facts to himself. In the first place, he had never lived anywhere except in Pleasant Valley. In the second place, he was scarcely more than two months old when people began to notice him in the neighborhood of the stone wall. And in the third place, since he was somewhat timid, he thought it just as well if people didn't know where he made his home. He was, as his friends often said, an odd person. For instance, he had always looked old from the very first. And when everyone began to call him Daddy, it was only to be expected that he would not care to let people know that he was not even a year old, instead of 90 or 100, as they supposed. Besides, probably no one would have believed the truth, so he never told his age. Indeed, there were some who claimed that Daddy Longlegs must be much more than 100 years old. They thought that his strange, tottering walk alone was enough to show his great age. But it is not strange that his walk seemed a bit uncertain. When a person has eight feet, it is to be expected that he will have a little trouble managing them. It is to be expected that he will sometimes find himself trying to walk off in several directions at the same time. Daddy Longlegs had such pleasant manners that it was no time at all before his neighbors agreed that he was a good old soul, and everybody was glad to claim him as a friend. At least, everybody but Mr. Crow. Mr. Crow soon found that people were asking Daddy's advice on all sorts of questions, because they thought he was very old and therefore very wise and Mr. Crow at once became so jealous that he didn't know what to do. He began making unkind remarks about his new rival, saying that no matter how old a person might be, if he had a small head and eight long legs, it was not reasonable to believe that he could have much knowledge. 
Whenever anybody mentioned Daddy's name, Mr. Crow would ha-ha loudly and mutter something about old spindly legs. Mr. Crow had spent many summers in Pleasant Valley, and during that time, he had advised thousands of his neighbors. Indeed, he often boasted that if he had a kernel of corn for every bit of advice he had given away, he would never have to wonder where he was going to get his next meal. When some friend of Mr. Crow's repeated that speech to Daddy Longlegs, he observed that Mr. Crow must be very wise. No doubt, he added in his thin, quavering voice, no doubt Mr. Crow's help would be worth a kernel of corn to anybody who was in trouble. If his advice was good, no one would object to paying for it. And if it proved to be bad... No one would miss a kernel of corn. It happened that Daddy Longlegs' comment soon reached the ears of old Mr. Crow, and it made that gentleman furious. This is the first time anybody has suggested that my advice is not always first class, he croaked. Here's this long-legged upstart interfering in my affairs. I must teach him a lesson, Mr. Crow declared. Well, that very afternoon, he challenged Daddy Longlegs to a contest. I intend to prove, said Mr. Crow, that my advice is always good and that yours is always bad. Very well, Daddy Longlegs answered, but I advise you to go home at once, Mr. Crow. You're very hoarse, and I'm sure you ought to be in bed. Now the old gentleman was always hoarse, and since he disliked anyone mention this, his eyes snapped angrily. I advise you, he roared, I advise you to keep your advice to yourself. Of course, that was a rude speech, but Daddy Longlegs did not take offense at all. He straight away told Mr. Crow that he ought to be wearing boots. And Mr. Crow was so upset that he couldn't speak for as much as a half an hour. It was understood that the contest between Daddy and Mr. Crow would take place the following morning. And when that time came, a big crowd had gathered upon the stone wall to see the fun. My cousin Jasper Jay has kindly consented to ask some questions, Mr. Crow informed Daddy Longlegs, and he will decide which of us makes the wiser answers. Buster Bumblebee, who was watching and listening, said, That's hardly fair, it seems to me. But old Mr. Crow quickly told him that he'd better keep still. So he said nothing more. Meanwhile, Daddy Longlegs beamed at all the company. And Mr. Crow looked at him out of the corner of his eye. Then he said to Daddy, I suppose you've no objection to this plan? It suits me very well, Daddy Longlegs replied. I thought it would said old Mr. Crow with a smirk. Then Jasper Jay announced that he would ask the first question. And after he had heard Mr. Crow's opinion, he would listen to Daddy Longlegs. When is the best time to plant corn? Jasper then asked Mr. Crow, while the whole company craned their necks and strained their ears, for of course they didn't want to miss anything. Mr. Crow made no answer for a few moments. He appeared to be thinking deeply. But at last he looked up and said, The best time to plant corn is as early as possible. A good many of those present exclaimed at once that that was a good answer, 
and a few clapped their hands. What's your opinion? Jasper Jay then asked, turning to Daddy Longlegs. Daddy Longlegs took off his hat, mopped his narrow forehead with his red bandana, and then slowly nodded his head three times. My answer is exactly the same as Mr. Crow's, he piped in his strange, high, thin voice. At that, a look of displeasure passed quickly over the faces of the two cousins. And when little Mr. Chippy called on Jasper Jay to decide which was the better answer, Jasper looked really worried. It is a tie this time, he said quite sourly. And while everyone was shouting, he and Mr. Crow withdrew to one side and whispered, which some considered to be rather bad manners. Soon Jasper and Mr. Crow returned to the crowd, and Jasper now looked as bold as ever. I will ask the next question, he announced, and Daddy Longlegs may answer first. How many kernels of corn make a meal? There wasn't a sound except for Buster Bumblebee's buzzing as Daddy Longlegs moved forward a few steps and held his hand behind his ear. Speak louder, somebody said to Jasper. You know he's hard of hearing. So Jasper Jay repeated the question, but Daddy Longlegs only looked at him blankly. It was quite clear that he couldn't understand a single word that Jasper said. This is strange, old Mr. Crow exclaimed, looking very hard at Daddy Longlegs. You heard the first question easily enough, but now you don't seem to be able to hear anything. And all the time Daddy Longlegs merely smiled at Mr. Crow. He made no comment at all. Don't you know what I'm saying? Mr. Crow bawled in his loudest tones. It is a pleasant day, said Daddy Longlegs, but I'm afraid there's going to be some heavy wind tomorrow. That is certainly peculiar, Mr. Crow grumbled. And then little Mr. Chippy hastened to explain that Daddy Longlegs was often like that. He would appear to hear you perfectly one moment, and then, if you happened to ask him his age or where he came from, you might find him unable to understand a single word that you said. It's most unfortunate, said old Mr. Crow. I see nothing to do but reply to the question myself. And then my cousin Jasper Jay will decide which has given the better answer, Daddy Longlegs or I. Ah, but you cannot do that, cried Daddy Longlegs suddenly. Jasper Jay said you were not to answer this question until after I had. And you know you mustn't break the rules of the contest. Old Mr. Crow's mouth fell open. He was so astonished. Why, he can hear again, he exclaimed. And after staring at Daddy Longlegs for a while, he beckoned to Jasper Jay. And again, the two cousins moved a little distance away and began whispering. When they returned, both were smiling broadly. And mounting the stone wall once more, Jasper said that he would put another question to Daddy Longlegs and Mr. Crow, and that they must both answer it at the same time. Then he cautioned Daddy Longlegs to speak up good and loud because Mr. Crow had a strong voice. I'd suggest, said Daddy Longlegs, I'd suggest that Mr. Crow speak as softly as possible, because my voice is weak. That's only fair, everyone agreed, nodding their heads to one another. But Mr. Crow appeared annoyed. Everybody's against me, he grumbled. I almost believe he said, turning to his cousin. I almost believe they're all in league with Farmer Green. 
If you are not sure, why don't you ask Farmer Green himself? Daddy Longlegs inquired. I will, cried Mr. Crow in a loud voice. I'll ask him the next time I see him. Then you can ask him now, said Daddy Longlegs, for here he comes. The words were hardly out of Daddy's mouth when old Mr. Crow began to beat the air furiously with his broad wings. He rose quickly, but not too high, and made for the woods as fast as he could fly. Now, that's strange, Daddy Longlegs trembled. I don't see how he's going to talk with Farmer Green when he's half a mile away from him. And everybody else said the same thing. He's gone off and left the contest unfinished, little Mr. Chippy observed. So there's nothing Jasper Jay can do except declare that Daddy Longlegs is the winner and the wisest person in Pleasant Valley. I couldn't very well do that, Jasper objected. You're forgetting about Solomon Owl. Well, Daddy Longlegs is wiser than old Mr. Crow anyhow, Mr. Chippy retorted. And since almost everyone said that was true, Jasper Jay didn't quite dare object. But it was plain that he didn't agree with the company, and he stamped his feet and clashed his bill together and shook his head as if he were very unhappy. He, too, began to believe with his cousin, Mr. Crow, that Daddy Longlegs and all the others were on Farmer Green's side. And that's the end of this part. Good night. <laughs>